Hey friends, Christy here with Little Roots Ranch and happy March. I can't believe it's March already. I mean, I feel like March always sneaks up on me and March is really exciting because once we get through March, we're so close to getting to our last frost date, which is always big in a gardener's life. Um, I think a lot of folks have their last frost dates in about April. I'm not sure though, obviously. If you know your last frost date, you can put it down in the comments below. If you don't, I would definitely look it up because it comes into play with a lot of like seed startings and especially like transplants of like your sensitive vegetables and stuff like that. But I wanted to kind of go over a quick list and I wrote them down because I always do that because I'll forget when I'm on camera. But basically there's a lot of seeds that we can start in March, both inside and outside or in greenhouse or undercover or anything like that. So first I'm gonna start with uh, seeds to start indoors first. And it's a pretty big list. Um, basically, I'll go through the list, but basically you can start anything, but your, think of your big things like your melons and cucumbers and uh, squash. And I'll explain right after I get to these lists, but basically it's, it's pretty much, it's a lot of different things. So, um, you know, I know I always say this, I don't think anyone grows rhubarb from seed, but I always say rhubarb from seed, just in case somebody wants to, you can definitely start that. Celery is a slow grower. That's something you can start inside and watch grow. I like the little leaves. I don't know. I like growing celery. Um, herbs like fennel and parsley and really all herbs. Rosemary is exceptionally slow growing. That one I always recommend. I mean, you can do whatever you like. You can definitely start from seed. I've done that before, but it grows so slow. I always recommend with that one, just purchase from the nursery. Um, also spinach, of course, all of your cold crops, brassicas, brassiaceae family, which is broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, collards, um, collard greens, all of your heat loving crops like ground cherries, peppers, tomatillos, tomatoes, and your leeks. And those would be targeting for a late fall, um, what's it called? Late fall harvest. You wouldn't plant leeks, leeks now, or sorry, start leeks now and have them as a summer harvest unless you're harvesting for baby leeks. But basically, you can kind of start everything, any kind of lettuces or greens, heat loving stuff. Um, the only things, like I said, I would, I would advise not to start roots inside um, personally. And then we're not at the time yet for planting like cucumbers, um, squash, and like vining things like melons or uh well watermelon i guess is also a melon and because the the melons and the cucumbers are in the cucurbaceae family and they do not like their roots being disturbed not one bit and so when you start those seeds you want to be able to transplant them right away they also grow really fast especially like the melons or winter squash or things like that and they grow really, really fast. So it's not the time yet for those, but for everything else, it's definitely time. You can start the seeds inside with confidence and know that you can transplant them out after hardening them off um, as the weather starts to get better and better. As far as transplant, as far as uh, sowing seeds outside, there really are a lot of options too. It's more of, but the one thing I want to say is like a caveat is that there's going to be a difference. Like if I take, you know, 10 lettuce seeds and I put them inside on my rack and it's in the warm house and it there's the lighting is, you know, manufactured, there's no rainy days inside or no snow days inside. And those things are gonna germinate, you know, probably 80, 90% accuracy or germination rate, and they're gonna grow well. Well, if I put take another 10 seeds and I put them out on the ground, I'm not going to start, I'm not going to see plants coming up in like a week or so like I would inside. It might take a week or two or depending on the weather or whatnot. So if you're sowing outside and sowing inside, I want, I definitely want you to know that there's definitely going to be a different time 
for how long it takes to come up. And so you have to, the garden teaches us a lot of patience, especially when you're sowing outside. Cause you know, the seeds, they know when the conditions have been met for them to germinate. And so they'll go whenever they go. But sometimes that means that as a gardener, we're walking out and looking at the soil and there's no beautiful plants like we want to see. And so the plants are just going to wait and buy their time. And then when they feel that the, the seeds, when they feel that the conditions are right, then they'll germinate. It, but it's always hard as a gardener to wait. So here are some things that you can sow outside. And it's a lot like the other list, but minus any of the heat loving stuff. Um, so you're looking at all of your leafy greens, including like lettuces, spinach, Swiss chard, anything that has an edible leaf, you can go ahead and sow that outside. Um, all of the peas and of course, fava beans were kind of, you wanna be careful and not push that too long because peas, they really dry up and don't do well when the weather starts getting really warm. So you wanna give the plant enough time to grow in its ideal condition, which is the cooler weather, and to set all these beautiful pea pods that you can enjoy, if you like peas, I do, um, you know, and snap peas or any kind of, there's all kinds of different, snap, snow, and shelling peas. Um, and of course, fava beans as well. Uh, I already talked about spinach, Swiss chard, Herbs outside, cilantro, fennel, parsley, uh, those ones, herbs are really great at holding out uh, outside and then germinating when they're ready without rotting or anything like that. Um, of course, you know, continuing with the greens, arugula, Asian greens. As far as root crops, uh, radishes, turnips, carrots, beets, those are all, uh, an ex sorry, March is an excellent time to get those uh, out sown outside. Um, and then just a reminder, they'll come up when they're ready. They may not come up right away. It depends on what kind of weather we're having and your um, uh, microclimate. Um, and then also potatoes. If you haven't sowed potatoes yet, I believe that most people sow potatoes by or on uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day. And so I did mine um, in late January and I still have some more to plant, and so I'm gonna do a succession, but you can really get them in the ground anytime. That's one of the cool things about sowing outside is that, yeah, you don't see immediate results and you don't see the seedlings growing and you can't space exactly, or you might have to thin them and stuff, but it is nice if you have a really busy lifestyle and you can kind of set it and forget it. Because right now, the rain will water the seedlings and they'll emerge when the temperatures and conditions get ideal. And so if you have a really busy life or you're trying to grow a good amount of food and can't tend to all of it, go ahead and just put those seeds in the ground and see what comes up. I know a lot of people, or like I've seen uh, other people do, and I've done a variation of this, not intentionally, it just kind of happened, where you know they'll get like a raised garden bed and just put a lot of seeds in there and then just see what comes up and if too much is coming up then you can thin it out or whatever it just depends what your gardening goal is um but anyways so i wanted to do like i said that quick video to i'm trying to make it quick i always get to talking but uh of seeds to start in march and basically it's a lot of them Everything except for um, your uh, cucumbers, though I think a lot of people start cucumbers in March, but I personally would wait a little bit. Um, and then of course, winter squashes, regular squashes, things like that. Unless you've got a heated greenhouse or a specific setup or a warmer microclimate, in that case, that might be available. But anyways, I hope you've made it to the end of the video and I hope that you enjoyed watching it and that it was helpful. If you have any seed starting tips or um, growing air, like everybody in the comment section is from the same area, like the Pacific Northwest generally, um, or climates that are like ours. So if you wanna share like tips or what you're growing or what you're starting or you know what your microclimate is or anything like that, and we can all help each other. And I really like that because, you know, create like a little gardening village uh, but anyways, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you liked it, please like the video. That helps me. And happy gardening. Thanks. Bye.